Now, they're the first breeding population of beavers in the English countryside in hundreds of years. This is either a historic day for English conservation or the start of a grave threat to our fragile river ecosystems. England's first wild beavers have been given the permanent right to stay in their home in Devon. For me, this is home. As a zoologist and science communicator, getting outdoors and being around nature is really important to me. And what makes this place so special is the fact that it is home to one of just a handful of the UK's population of wild beavers. Beavers used to be an integral part of our landscape, but they were pushed to extinction over 400 years ago, hunted for their meat, oils and fur. And with the loss of species comes the loss of balance and ultimately a less resilient environment. As climate change brings more extreme weather, our river systems have been restricted and we face a biodiversity crisis. Having beavers back in our landscape is more critical than ever before. So how can beavers help us with the impacts of climate change, boosting biodiversity and creating a healthier, more balanced environment? This summer, I'm going on a journey, visiting sites where beavers have been reintroduced and finding out how we might learn to live alongside these industrious creatures once again. The first stop of my journey is Woodland Valley Farm, home of the Cornwall Beaver Project and Beaver Trust HQ. It's three years after beavers were released onto the site, and I am Hello, here Chris. to meet farmer Good Chris Jones, owner of the farm and the brains behind the project, to hear about the impact the beavers have had since they took up residence. This is like the tractor that you dream of when you're five. A frog! Well, they're proper. Yeah, there's just frogs everywhere here. The insect life is phenomenal. Haven't you had lots of new bird records this year as well? Eight new bird records since the beavers arrived here and started building. We had one visit here uh, the other day from someone from the <gasps> British Dragonfly Society and he got, in the space of a couple of hours, found 11 different species. Wow. It, it is just abundantly clear that uh, beavers create the conditions for a whole range of wildlife. We've got seven dams here. So the, the whole stream is now a series of pools. Uh, and now, uh, the time it takes for water to get through is probably more than an hour now, uh, rather than just a few minutes. Why do you think beavers are so important for us to consider implementing back into Britain? Our relationship with uh, nature, by and large, in the West is broken. What the beavers do is actually start to reset the way our rivers and streams work and start to allow abundance of wildlife to uh, come back. In the middle of the extinction crisis that we have, this is the, the one way we can actually turn that around at pretty minimal cost. Has having all this water here next to us from the beavers, has that mitigated the effects of drought? In 2018, when we had that prolonged drought across the summer, we were able to pump water out wow. uh, onto uh, pasture because we had a big reserve of water here. We, it gave us an option which we didn't, wouldn't have otherwise had. And, you know, to have a, a government even thinking, oh, is this a good idea, is extremely maddening. You know, it's, it's not a question of if, it's a, a question of must. Walking around the site with Chris, it's amazing to see the way the beavers have sculpted the landscape. The Cornwall Beaver Project demonstrates the incredible positive effects having beavers back in our landscape can have. So the question I have is why are beavers not back and widespread across the UK? Next, I have a quick chat arranged with German beaver specialist Gerhard Schwab. Beavers were reintroduced into Bavaria almost 60 years ago and it didn't go without its teething problems. As the population of beavers grew, they moved out of the rivers and into agricultural land, where they inflicted small amounts of damage on fields, feeding on crops and flooding small areas along the rivers. It's going to be really interesting to hear from Gerhard and see how things compare to what I'm seeing here in the UK. Hello, it's so nice to meet you. You have many books behind you. Are they all about beavers? Uh, some of them, not all. There are other interests besides beavers. <laughs> I think that's quite healthy. 
in Bavaria, your journey with beavers has been a lot longer. It would be great to hear from you a little bit about where you are with all of that at the moment. Well, management here in Bavaria started in 96. Farmers is one of the major problems because they own most of the area along the creek. So the best is to have a set aside along the creek from 5 to 10 meters with land to the right and to the left where the water can be, where nature can work and have human land use 20 meters away and then both can live together without any problems. Important thing was most of the people didn't the beaver to go again, they just wanted to help. Vinza is a small town in Bavaria that was facing a lot of issues with flooding, and I have heard that beavers unexpectedly helped the town, so I'm curious to find out how. The problem with Vinza was they had a severe flooding in 2013 and had already floodings before. They had planned a dam to keep the water from a small creek back. Here the beaver came and he was building dams in the forest and instead of having 45 minutes from the water from the upstream coming down, it takes now 20 days. It was all beaver made dam and in the long run they saved about 300,000 euro. That's only one beaver family in one creek in one village. Biggest positive effect of beavers is the creation of habitat. And in this open area, so you have the black stock and the Bavarian forest coming in. You're, I know you're aware of uh, what's going on in the UK at the moment. What would be your advice as to what they should do? So you can take a lot of advantage of the existing management systems we have in Europe and implement them together with the beavers. That is a lot of food for thought. <laughs> What Gerhard has shown is how, in Bavaria, they have learnt to coexist with beavers and actually benefit from them. The beavers are saving towns huge amounts of money in flood mitigation and increasing biodiversity. Next, we are heading to Scotland, where beaver reintroductions began in 2009. So I'm going to see for myself how beavers are slotting back into a landscape that has changed since they were here 400 years ago. So I've arrived here in Scotland and already this feels like a landscape where beavers really belong. Now I'm here to meet two people that have two very different experiences with beavers. Roisin Campbell Palmer is a beaver management specialist and has been involved in the reintroductions here in the UK for over a decade. Nice to finally meet you, how's it going? Good, yeah. Well, Roisin has seen firsthand the disruption that our busy beavers can cause so I'm keen to hear about her experiences with attitudes towards beavers and some of the management issues she has had to tackle here in Scotland. I'm meeting Roisin in an area where beavers have been left to their own devices to shape the landscape, and we're going to check out their handiwork. Into the jungle we go. So this is the bit I get excited about. This is the dam, okay? But the dam's about 100 plus metres long, right? So everything this way is, is new wetland. But what you have, which is quite a unique habitat for Britain, is a dead, flooded woodland. Mm. And when I say it's dead, it's not the trees are dead, but there's so much life in there because of the, the dead, the decaying woods. It's really quite exciting that something like this can develop very, very quickly if, we're, if we permit it. Roisin works closely with local communities and landowners to try and find positive solutions to conflicts. Trapping and translocation can be very successful and a way to engage with those facing issues, showing them alternatives to lethal control really can work. I mean, if we want beavers or even any other species to come back, I think we have to take people's concerns seriously and um, we have to listen. Um, and it's about reassurance. And I think it's the fear of the unknown, isn't it? In some areas, and it is the, the minority of areas, they will cause these conflicts. And, you know, I think we should be engaging with these landowners and, and try and help them. And, and we've got all these tried and tested solutions, but it's just new to like a British, Scottish context. Have you had any moments where you've, say, had a landowner who's been concerned by the impacts that beavers are having mm -hmm. on their land, but then you've introduced some of these management techniques and that has assuaged any concerns such that they actually are happy for the beavers to stay? Oh yeah, absolutely. We put flow devices in. So that's basically about putting a pipe through the dam and it means we can regulate the water level behind it. So it's not about removing the dam and removing all the impounded water. It's Again, it's this compromise between the beavers and the landowners. It's just about compromising the height of the water. Are there any 
easy fixes for if you say want a tree protected? Oh absolutely, trees are one of the easiest things we can do, uh, protect them. So we generally use two methods, either a mesh guard or we paint a special substance on it that it's just about dissuading beavers because they don't like either metal in their teeth or grit. We're not saying okay you can have every tree you want beaver because you can't and the sooner you kind of implement these measures I think people are a more relaxed and they see that there's options but these are easy mitigation tools and we're, we're encouraging people to do it themselves as well. What a woman. I was slightly in awe of her I think. I mean she said so much that just made a lot of sense but the main thing that I got from it is I think the importance of empathy and listening to people's opinions especially if they're concerned about beavers and just making the time to hear what they have to say. Community support in the reintroduction of a species is incredibly important in their long-term survival. There has been concern among a small number of communities that beaver dams create barriers for migrating fish such as salmon and trout. Angela Duncan Pepper has been fishing Scotland's rivers for years and has found that the beavers most definitely have had an impact, but a positive one. Quite a few people are concerned that the actual physical structure of a dam poses a, an obstacle, a physical barrier to migratory fish yeah. jumping up and migrating upstream to spawn. It's not a worry. I mean, 70% of the world's Atlantic salmon spawn in Norway mm. of their top 10 salmon rivers. Seven of them have beaver and six of them are at capacity for beaver. The Latin name for salmon, salmo salar, means leaper. Hmm. They're well known for getting past stuff, yeah. whether it's a big waterfall or beaver dam. Hmm. And they have tens of thousands of years of co-evolution alongside beaver and salmon or beaver and trout. Do you ever get frustrated that we're beating the around the bush a little bit and wasting time when we could be transforming and restoring ecosystems now. I think anyone who's ever studied ecology at any level is thrashing their head against the ground saying come on let's yeah. get going. So I've fished uh, the River Tay before there were beaver here and I've fished the lochs in Argyle where the beaver were reintroduced. There's no doubt in my mind that there are more fish where there are beaver. And, you know, that's it. You know, in a nutshell, that's why I like the presence of beaver, because there are more fish where you've got beaver. What's not to like? Yeah. Basically, we've been asset stripping from the rivers, from the surrounding land for years and years. Beaver redress that balance somewhat. They're a, a very useful tool in re-establishing some of what nature would like and you see the beaver as that opportunity to redress the balance. From what I've seen, they're massively beneficial. Massively beneficial. For the final stop on my journey, I'm heading back home to Devon to visit Derek Gow, an instrumental figure in the reintroductions across the UK to dig a little deeper into what he thinks the future looks like for beavers here in Britain. There he is. Okay. How do you see the future of the beaver in England at the moment? Are you hopeful? What's underlying it is the biggest problem is changing mindsets. Mm. But believe you me, you do it well, in the right situation, with the right animals of the right age, it will work. Down the line, do you think beavers represent an opportunity to go one way or the other in terms of our relationship with the natural world. They represent that opportunity, but this animal is actually a force of nature. It's the, the engineer, it's the, the turbo of life that you put back into to a wetland environment, and wetlands, let's not forget, are the, the, the richest living environment there is on the planet. And if you put that animal back there and tolerate its activities, it will start to re restore nature. This animal creates life. That's what's so important about beavers. Amen to that. Bye, Derek. See you later, thanks again. It's best not stall while we're in good company. From the beaver project at Woodland Valley Farm to the wild beavers living in Bavaria, Scotland and the River Otter, 
Allowing the widespread return of beavers is an important step we can take in starting to repair some of the damage we have done to our natural world. By reducing the impacts of drought and flooding, boosting biodiversity and creating space for nature to return, beavers could be one of our greatest allies in the fight against climate change. So what does the future look like for beavers across Britain? Without proper management, community and government support, their future is uncertain. Now it is our responsibility to put nature first, because without nature, we simply cannot survive. We need to work together in learning to live alongside these industrious creatures once again. And not beavers behind fences or within enclosures, beavers widespread living wild in our rivers and landscapes across Britain. Beavers without borders.